Unit 7, Lesson 13, Interpreting Points on a Coordinate Plane. Number 1. The elevation of a submarine is shown in the table. Draw and label coordinate axes with an appropriate scale and plot the points. The horizontal axis or the x-axis will identify the time after noon in hours and the vertical axis or the y-axis will represent elevation in meters. The horizontal axis is located at the top of this graph and the vertical axis is represented on the left hand side of this graph. On the top left hand corner you'll see a yellow zero and that yellow zero represents sea level and then just above it you see a blue 100 that represents 100 meters above sea level. Underneath the yellow zero, or underneath sea level, you'll see increments of 100, negative 100, negative 200, negative 300, and so forth. That represents the amount of meters below sea level. The first set of coordinates is zero and negative 567. The zero stands for zero time after noon hours, which means it's exactly at noon and the negative 567 stands for meters below sea level. So when we start at the axis, the yellow zero, where the horizontal axis and the vertical axis intersect, we move to the right zero units. So we stay right on that y-axis. Then for the negative 567, we slide down the y-axis and stop somewhere between negative 500 and negative 600 to represent negative 567. Now we'll have to go a little bit more than halfway between negative 500 and negative 600 because negative 567 meters below sea level is further down than negative 550 meters below sea level. And that's where we put our point. Remember, the first number in the coordinates is the amount that you're going to move along the horizontal axis, and the second number is the amount of units that you're going to move along the vertical axis. The second set of coordinates are 1 and negative 892, or 892 meters below sea level. So the number 1 represents 1 hour after noon, or 1 o'clock, and the negative 892 represents 892 meters below sea level. So that point is going to be plotted very close to negative 900. The submarine is almost 900 meters below sea level at 1 o'clock. So we move from the origin one unit to the right and then move down almost to negative 900 and that's where we put our point. Try the rest on your own and pause the video to check your answers. Number two, the x-axis represents the number of hours before or after noon, and the y-axis represents the temperature in degrees Celsius. So what this information is telling me so far, that the origin represents noon on the x-axis, and the origin represents freezing on the y-axis. Remember that the origin is your starting point. It's where your horizontal axis and the vertical axis intersect. A. At 9 a.m., it was below freezing. In what quadrant would this point be plotted? 9 a.m. is before noon, so we'd have to move to the left of the origin. And below freezing would be below freezing. So we'd move down, and that would put us in quadrant number 3. B. At 11 a.m., it was 10 degrees Celsius. In what quadrant would this point be plotted? 11 a.m. is still before noon, so we'd have to move to the left on the horizontal axis. 10 degrees Celsius would be above freezing because the freezing point for Celsius is zero degrees, so we'd have to move up the y-axis, and that would put us in quadrant number two. C. Choose another time and temperature, then tell the quadrant where the point should be plotted. If you come up with a positive time and a positive temperature, then your point would be plotted in quadrant number one. If you come up with a negative time and a positive temperature, then your point would be plotted in quadrant number two. A negative time and a negative temperature, your point would be plotted in quadrant number three. A positive time and a negative temperature, the point would be plotted in quadrant number four. For example, the coordinates negative 1 and positive 3 
That point would be plotted in quadrant number two because you'd move to the left one unit and then you'd move up three units and that would take you to quadrant number two. D. What does the point zero, zero represent in this context? The first zero would represent noon and the second zero would represent freezing. So zero, zero represents a freezing temperature at noon. Number three, the inequalities H is greater than 42 and H is less than 60 represent the height requirements for an amusement park ride, where H represents a person's height in inches. Write a sentence or draw a sign that describes these rules as clearly as possible. The person's height must be taller than 42 inches and shorter than 60 inches. Number four, solve each equation. A, 3A equals 12. Since we're solving for A, we need to get the A to be 1A. So we're gonna divide 3A by three. Since we divided 3A by three, we also need to divide 12 by three. 3A divided by three equals 1A, and 12 divided by three equals four. So 1A equals four, which is the same thing as A equals four. B. B plus 3 and 3 tenths equals 8 and 9 tenths. Since we're solving for B and we have to get B alone, we need to subtract 3 and 3 tenths from both sides. So B plus 3 and 3 tenths minus 3 and 3 tenths equals 8 and 9 tenths minus 3 and 3 tenths. That leaves us with B all by itself and 5 and 6 tenths. So B equals 5 and 6 tenths. C. 1 equals 1 fourth C. Since we're solving for C, we're going to have to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 1 fourth, which is 4 or 4 over 1. 1 times 4 over 1, or 1 times 4, is 4, and the reciprocal of 1 fourth times one-fourth equals one. So we're left with four equals one C, which is the same thing as four equals C, or C equals four. D, five and a half equals D plus one-fourth. Since we're solving for D, we need to get D by itself. So we're gonna remove one-fourth from both sides. So now we have five and a half minus one-fourth equals d plus one-fourth minus one-fourth. Well, d plus one-fourth minus one-fourth gets us back to d, which is why we did that in the first place. And five and a half minus one-fourth is the same as five and two-fourths minus one-fourth. And five and two-fourths minus one-fourth is five and one-fourth. So five and one-fourth equals d, or d equals five and one-fourth. E. 2E equals 6 and 4 tenths. Well, since we're solving for E, we need to get the E by itself. So we need to divide both sides by 2. 2E divided by 2 equals 6 and 4 tenths divided by 2. 2E divided by 2 leaves us with 1E, and 6 and 4 tenths divided by 2 leaves us with 3 and 2 tenths. 1E equals 3 and 2 tenths. And that's the same as E equals 3 and 2 tenths. Congratulations, you have completed Unit 7, Lesson 13, Interpreting Points on a Coordinate Plane.